Hello guys, welcome back to the channel, Nigel here with you. So here we have part three of the build of this beautiful Meng Chieftain Mark 10. And um, it's coming on beautifully, it is a lovely, lovely kit. As you can see here, I've painted all these suspension units now. If you remember in the end of part two, we fitted all these shock absorber links and we assembled them and everything. So I've gone around with the airbrush, got into all the nooks and crannies and got all the, all the bits and pieces painted. Um, this really is a nice kit. I'm not sure if you can see it because it's all black, but the casting, the casting detail on there and the weld marks and everything is absolutely beautiful. Really, really nice. So uh, very pleased with how they've come out. They look lovely. Um, so now we're moving on to, we finished here, we finished step eight. So we're now on 212 parts we've done. Um, so now we're looking at uh, starting work on the hull. So we've got these four plates going on here which are here and then we've got the um, towing hook and the towing eye there which are going on and then we're going to start moving on to the um, the gearboxes and idler mounts and everything so um, first things first just talk about these plates they have an ejection pin mark in the an ejection pin mark in the back um, which needs to be removed it's raised so I've just sanded that that off and, or scraped it off just get in there with a knife and scrape it whatever and also for the sprue nibs on the edge of these parts, because they're nice and square, if you use a sanding stick, no matter how hard it is, you will tend to always put a radius on there. So that's where these things come in. These, these are um, the Infini Clear File three-way system. You can get the large and the small. Okay, and they're absolutely brilliant for removing sprue nibs from square edges because, I don't know if you can hear that, but it's not actually removing any plastic at all. It will only remove plastic if you put pressure on. So if I stroke it across the surface, if there's a sprue nib there, it will remove the sprue nib and then stop cutting. And it actually polishes, I don't know if you can see that, but it polishes the edge and actually shines it. You can actually polish clear parts with these things. They are amazing. But they're really, really good when it comes to, you know, sprue nibs on the edges like this, square edges. They're absolutely brilliant because they won't remove any excess material. So, um, yeah, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you've got some money in your tool budget, you spring an hole in your pocket, get yourself some of these. You can get them from there, premium hobbies. And if you do, don't forget, use the code NMB10 and then you'll get 10% off. Right, so there's another tool I've showed you. And I remembered in part two, here's a tool I used and I forgot to mention what it is. It's actually a glue loop where I used it for applying super glue and you can see on the end it has this sort of like a hook in the end and what that does that picks up um, glue and then it will deposit when you put it down. So just look them up. You can get them on Amazon or whatever. Glue glue loopers. Okay. So um, there we go. I'm trying to show you each tool I use as I go through uh, and try not to miss any out but obviously you got to part two and missed one so that was great. The other thing I forgot to do in part two was mention the group build that this is for over on Black Rifle Model Works. Uh, there is a royal group build going on. Um, I'll put a picture up now so you can see. You can go and have a look at it. You can, there's a video about it on, um, on, on YouTube. and there's a, You can go to his Facebook page and have a look and uh, join in over there and build along with me. So, um, moving on, these parts... There's an injection mark here, not an ejector mark, an injection mark there, which needs to be removed. So that's gone. So these plates here, I'm not sure what they are, what they're for. They just simply go in here. I'm going to have to turn the camera off from time to time because I've got a helicopter floating around. And I don't know what for, but uh, there's obviously something going on. He keeps coming over and changing the pitch of his blades and gets very, very noisy. So we're just going to glue that from the inside. And do the same over here. There we go. I think Jess is going to start barking now. It's great here, isn't it? Nice peaceful area I live in. Yeah, he's coming closer. You can probably hear him now. Getting noisy, chopping the air. Here he comes again. It's 
So there we go. So that's those four bits in. I'm going to go, and when he's gone, I'll come back. Oh, he's going. He, he's going again. Yeah, he's going again. Right, so we can stay on. So, no, he's not. I'll come back in a minute. Yeah. So in between banks with the helicopter, we've got these three. Uh, we've got these two hooks and this tow and I to go on now. So these hooks are going to go into here. By the way, the welding marks and stuff are absolutely awesome on this kit. Just look at that hull. Look at the welding marks around there. And the pads that these hooks are going to go into with the welding around there. Absolutely gorgeous. This really is a lovely, lovely kit. And the fit of everything is just beautiful. The only bit that hasn't fitted properly is those, um, those four little pins that went into the shock absorber mounts. That's the only part that hasn't fitted properly. So give that a little nudge just to squeeze it in. Put a little bit more glue on there just to get some melting going on just to seal the gap. Check they're nice and square. And yes they are. Look at that. It's like they grew there, isn't it? And then this is this little towing eye thing goes in with its long side at the bottom that's just going to sit in there and then drop a glue on there get that in position and there we go easy as that this thing just falls together it's that good right so now we're on to step 10 and we're looking at putting the gearbox covers in and we've got the front idler mounts. We've also got this door that goes on the side. I'm assuming, let me know if you know, I'm assuming that's for the release of um, spent shells, is it? That's D15, so we'll put that one on first. We've got an ejector pin mark on the back of there, I've just noticed, which is going to affect its fit, so we'll just cut that away. The helicopter is still lingering, so I don't know what's going on. And this is going to go into there like that. So that fits on there. So we'll get a drop of extra thin, drop it in behind. That'll be enough to hold that in place. Yeah, let me know if you know what that is. I'm wondering, is, is, is it like for access for something or is it for the spent shells? It seems a little too far forward actually for spent shells, I'm not sure. It can't be an emergency hatch because it's too small. Anyway, right. Um, so that's that done. Now we've got these idler assemblies. So we've got D36 and D35, that's the main mount. They've got A19 going in and A18 is just a bolt head. So I'm going to go away a minute. Hang on. Right, so I've glued those those adjuster bolts in. What a lovely, lovely kit this is. Look at those bolt detail on there. It's just unbelievably nice. So this is like resin. It's, it's just gorgeous. Uh, so these idlers, um, the idler shafts, go on like this. So they've got around two raised pins on there. One, one's like a raised hollow. And they're going to fit into there like so. Now, something I would normally do is leave these off. Um, and then I would remove that pin so that I could adjust the idler to get the track tension correct. But from the builds I've seen, the tracks look great. So, I don't know. I did, I was looking online. I don't normally do this when I'm doing a build. Just removing a bit of that sprue nib from there. Um, I don't normally do this when I'm doing a build, but I did look online because somebody was telling me the tracks on this thing are awful. And I looked online and the first thing I found, I think I mentioned this before, the first thing I found was somebody said, best tracks I've ever done. So I thought, I'll have a look. And um, I did notice that he said he used 94 tracks rather than the recommended 95. Because he wanted the right amount, he likes the tracks to be tight. So, and that went together beautifully. So I'm just going to glue these in place. Because I'm sure they're going to be fine. We'll get into here. There we go. So that's that glued in place. So that's both of them made up. 
I hope I don't eat my words and because and, it's horrible when you get a tr when you get tracks and they're either sagging to death or they're like really tall. I think on these they need to be just sort of a little bit baggy on the front but I have got pictures in those these books that Phil sent me. Thank you Phil. And they do show them with um, very tight tracks. So we shall see. See how that works out. Um, I'm also thinking because I remember seeing on a build many years ago I saw um, they use magnets to put the side skirts on so I think I might do that so that we can take it off and look at all this beautiful detail on here because it really is nice. Right, um, so we've got to glue these into position now, so which one's which? So this one is that one over there, so that's going to go on there like that I assume. Look at that fit, that is gorgeous. So, put some cement in there and we'll put some cement in there. Let it all run around. We want this to be nice and strong. We don't want it breaking off. There we go. You do the same on this side. I've got this right, haven't I, yet? go. So that's the idlers on. It's just, it just falls together this thing doesn't it? It's beautiful. Right, so onto these gearbox covers. So we've got C4 and C5. So this one is C4 so that's going to go in that side like that. Okay, so I'm going to put some extra thin in there. And drop that on, and then the bits I can get to are here. Okay, so that one's gone on there, and then we've got C27, which is indeed this one. And that's going to go on. They've got these great big ejector pins on there, you don't need to worry about that, they don't, they don't get in the way of anything. So that's going to go on like that. So I'm going to put a nice big drop of extra thin in here. And then we can run the extra thin around the rest and let capillary action take it in. There we go. So we'll do the same on this side. In case you're wondering, I have dry fitted this stuff off camera, so always dry fit your parts first, test fit, test, test, test the glue once. Especially if it's a short run kit. it on there. Get that one on. There we go. And then run our extra thin into there. And into there. There we go. Job done. Very, very nice indeed. So we need to let that dry. The other thing I'm going to do before I fit this, the main um, suspension unit, so I'm going to get in here with the airbrush so I can get painting behind there. Otherwise I'll never get them painted in the back. Um, there we are. Very, very nice. Very impressive kit indeed. One of the nicest kits I've ever built, I think, so far. It really is nice. So, did I put extra thin in there? I'm not sure. I don't remember if I did or not. There we go. So that's step 10 done. So we're really cracking on 230 parts now. All right, so as I mentioned in step two, we're not gonna follow the instruction sequence here. I did mention this at the beginning as well. 
Um, because what they want us to do now is start fitting all sorts of little detail parts to the upper hull, which seems a little daft. Um, and then you're going on more detail parts going on here. And then the engine grills and all that, and these little greeblies. And then these boxes on the sides, and then fit the hull to the, 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 the top to the bottom, which seems a little daft to me. Personally, I would do that, and then go back and start fitting your greeblies. Plus, because this is a Berlin camo scheme, I am not going to fit little bits like headlights and stuff. They're going to make it a real swine to mask. So I'm going to have to have a good look at the scheme, see where the demarcations are, where the masking is going to be, and do the um, painting and detailing accordingly. So we're not going to do that, we're not doing that, we're not going to do any of this. Not doing any of that, I'm not doing the side skirts, I'm not doing the, um, the fenders, the mudguards, whatever you want to call them. Or any of that, I'm going straight to step 28 which is where we have to start fitting the suspension and then I'm going to put some wheels on and make up some tracks so we can get the tracks done and then the tracks are out of the way and then we can concentrate on the hull. The trouble is with having all those reebly detail parts on and everything then coming on putting it on its back and working your tracks in and everything you're likely to start damaging those greebly so I'd rather build the hull get all the suspension on have the tracks done and then we can remove the tracks remove the wheels and carry on with the build. So as I said just now, the first thing I want to do, I want to get some black paint down in behind here before we start, and I'll probably get some in there as well, so the suspension get, doesn't get in the way, because you can see here, if I fit if I fit a suspension unit in there, then it's going to be difficult to get the paint down in there. So, sorry, I had a cough there, guys. So, um, yeah, so I'm not going to fit them on, and I've just noticed that I haven't actually got the paint up in there, look. So now you can see how obvious it is when you've got this light grey plastic. You can see how, how that stands out. That's why I paint everything black. So I'll have to do that one again as well. So I'll get some black paint in there and then I'll be back. Okay, so all the painting's done and the helicopter's finally gone. So we've got peace. So yeah, I've got the painting done. So I've got the black paint down in there. All looking good. So we've got now look at, look, look at fitting these suspension units. So as I say, we're jumping forward to step 28. So, um, if you remember with these suspension units, we had the, the uh, swing arm A, okay, the, um, and the right suspension A, and then we had the left suspension A. Well, they're obvious because they're the ones with the shock absorbers on, so we can split those two off so they're there. And then, if you remember, um, I put on the back left and right as well because if you if you don't know already if you've made your parts you're not sure which is which C25 which is the left has this slot here you can see me pointing out the end of the tweezers this one as you can see is plain okay just comes straight along here and this one has this sort of slot in it so that's your left one okay so that one's going to go on the left side there and they're a lovely fit, they just clip in, absolutely gorgeous. Um, but we're going to put some glue in there first. So that's the front ones. And then when you turn the page, in step seven, we had this suspension B assembly middle and rear. Now, the only difference I can see in these is the way these A21 and A22 fit, if you remember in part two. So what I did, I wrote on the back of them seven, Okay, so step seven, and then I didn't write anything on these. So I know that those two are middle, and I know that these two that are marked are rear. So that's how we're going. So we can go on and get them on. So I'm going to put a drop of the Tamiya white top in here. Now this one's right. So I'm going to put a drop of this in there just to make sure we've got something sticking it in the middle. I don't want too much so that it oozes out and everything. So that one's going to go into there. Like so. And then we'll get a clamp on it to hold it in place while it dries. And then th these are the middle. That's right, wouldn't it? Yeah, the top one was middle. So that one's going to go in there. So middle for little get some of the white top in there as well that 
should help to hold that down. See if we can get a peg on there. No. That's a shame. And then this one, which is unmarked, is the rear. Just test fit that first. Yep, that goes in fine. Always dry fit your parts, guys. So we should have one like that and one with the seven on. There we go. So we're all good now. So now we know when we come to fit those parts, A21 and A22, which are the supports. And as I say, I'm tempted to put magnets in them. Right. As you can see, these do need clamping in place. I think what I'll do is get these others on. That was the rear one. And then get one of my big... And are you going to ask, these are called Rebel... These clamps come from a company in Sweden called Rebel Hobby. Every time I get these clamps, I get asked what they are, where they're from. I've done a review on them. This is easier said than done, isn't it? They just want to keep falling off. There we go. Let's just move that over. Try to get them in the middle. They don't want to go in the bloody middle. Wow, this is not easy. There we go. I just want to make sure they dry tight up against the um, hull and not floating around. So I'll open that one up. In the middle. There we go, that'll hold them till they dry. And then finally, <clears throat> this one here. <clears throat> there goes my frog in my throat again, as usual. Oh shit. Let's get a peg on this one while I can. down and then have another attempt at fitting these right, let's try again talk about awkward okay so that's all held in place now all good so we'll leave that to dry and then we'll get some more cement running around them and in fact what I think I'll do is run some extra thin down there now because I can see I've got a little bit of oozage there we'll just run some extra thin down into that joint there let it capillary in and that will get them solid and if you hear that, there's Jess having a grumble. And then the other thing I just thought of what we can do is run some glue into those holes there. So and they should be nice and solid then. So we'll leave that to dry and then I'll come back in about an hour or a couple of seconds for you. Okay, <clears throat> moving forward, the, uh, this is all drying up now. So we've, I put some more extra thin around just to get them really solid. So it's all looking dandy. So, um, right, let's have a look here. So we've done all this. We haven't put the road doors on yet. I want to start looking at the tracks. Now, there's some good news 
and there's some very bad news but we'll come to the bad news in a minute so I've basically got the jig off the jig is these two clear parts here I've got some um, tracks the tracks come in the kit in this bag and they come on on a sprue in pairs as you can see so this is where these glass files come in really handy as well because as you can see when you have this you cut them off you cut them off like so and there's a tiny little sprue nib left on there with these glass files as I said earlier they don't they're not like a sanding stick if you went across with a sanding stick they just keep sanding until there's nothing left but with this if you don't push it will only remove anything that's raised and as you can see it's polished the plastic so as you can see on there there's a sprue nib yeah you can see the sprue nib in the middle I just I can feel it picking up on it and as you sand it with these glass files it's removed it but it hasn't taken any plastic off it hasn't removed any more plastic than is already there um, so I'll put those to one side so anyway um, Pressing on, what they're telling you to do is put these tracks together. Now, they they have one side has this pin going in, and one side has a little nubbin on it. So you can see on here, there's a little raised nubbin on there, and on the other side there's a hole. So obviously that's going to go into there. So I'm just going to push that into that an angle and clip it together like that. And then the next one, and it's, um, how many is it? One... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. I think it's seven. One, two, no, it's six. No, it's seven because there's going to be the track at the end. So that's going to go into there like that. And for those of you that love tracks, you'll love these. Um, they seem to go together really nicely, but I have been warned that they don't. So I don't know. We shall see. Um, so that's one, two, three, four, five. So there's six. I don't know if you could just actually snap these together. I don't know if you just put them down on the bench and just push them into place. And I reckon it might break that, that pin off. I think it's better to do it like that, pivot in. Okay, so that's them gone in like that. So now they're going to go that way up into the jig and they really do sit in there nicely look at that fit in there absolutely beautifully and obviously you've got this one at the end which isn't going to have a pin in because it's going to get a pin on the next shot and they've done this jig so that you can actually get them in sometimes they do it so you can do five at a time and then you have to put them together but um, here they've done it so when we do the next lot we can put the back of that one in that position. So they also look on here, it looks like they're, they're telling you to put this this top piece in like that. But you're, are you going to break it? I think the easiest way to do it is to um, slide it in like so. And then we're going to bring that over the top. I've done it upside down. Knobhead. There we go. There we go, that goes over like that. That clips over. And then we get these pins and push them in. They're a very tight fit. Oh, you heard them go in then, didn't you? And they do go in all the way. As you can see, if we open this up, you can see the end of the sprue nib goes into there so the, the round part of the sprue is going to push into that section there that section there look. so yeah they, you can't break them off just push it in as far as it'll go and then we'll open it up slide that out of the way and then take them out and then come along here easier from this side being careful not to damage the tracks we'll come in and we'll just cut them off like so 
what's making it difficult is the actual pin is kind of under the track you can see you've got that the end of the pin is here and then you've got the track sticking out so you can't just be careful not to damage the track so there we are so that is a lovely lovely working track now what I'm interested in how well do they fit the sprockets this is always the telltale with tank kits how well do these tracks fit the sprockets well the answer is perfectly look at that what a lovely kit this is this is such a pleasure after that Apache and the Scammel so there we go right now I did say to you there is some bad news um, that's going to be an issue actually you don't have left and right handed tracks so one side's going to have the pins and the other side's going to have holes so you might want to put some plastic discs on there or something um, and that can go in the bin what I was actually explaining when you push them in you can see that they go right up you can see the ball on the sprue underneath my finger now that goes right into there so you can push them right in without breaking them off. Um, yes, yeah, so as I said, there's some bad news. Um, you know my favourite things in the world? Ejector pin marks. Every one of the track links has got two ejector pin marks on it. And luckily they're raised, so we don't have to start thinking about filling them. We can just sand them. So what I'm doing... It's just initially giving them a quick scrape. Just to break them down. And then I'm coming in with a skinny stick. And just sanding them away. Like so. So... Yeah, that's going to be fun, isn't it? Time to get a film on or something, and um, I don't know, something like Midway or something like that. <laughs> just, just get a film on and just just sit here and do that. But uh, the thing is, that the, the good thing is, I do them on the sprue together, and that way it helps your stick stay parallel. When you do them, you do them off the sprue like this, you run the risk of doing this and rounding everything off. But um. Yeah, you might want to give them a very light spray in with something, just a very light dust coat of black or something so you can see when you actually remove them. But um, the trouble is, if you don't do this, that's, that's fine. But the trouble is, when you look at where the road wheels go, the road wheels go right over where the ejector pin marks are. And if you're going to do this accurate, the tracks would be kind of polished in that area and you know what's going to happen then it's going to stick out like a sore thumb so I think it's worth doing or just get some aftermarket tracks but uh, yeah unfortunately I mean the other thing you could do perhaps is leave them all and do them like this maybe try doing them after they're all assembled that might be easier yeah I'll try that on another lot so I'll do another lot now and we'll try sanding that and see how it works out Okay, so I've built up another seven links with the ejector pin marks still on them. Now, if you wanted to continue, you would basically put this one in in the first position. And then you would put these in like that. So you'd basically be joining them all up together. But I'm going to do this as a separate entity to see if we can sand the... I don't know, we might as well do it together, haven't we? So what we'll do is we'll put that... We'll take one of these off. We only need six, and then what we'll do is we'll slap that into there. It's just grown in again. So we'll snap that into there, which is easier said than done because the camera's on. And then we look at where we are. So that's the first one. Yeah, that's the first one. So that's going to go into there like that. So you can see there we've got the first one. The first one has the the hole in the first position and then we'll slide this in a 
go on, close the lid, push the pins in, and then give it a, you hear them really go in then. And what I did see the other guy doing on the, the other video I was talking about, he actually snapped these off. I, I don't want to do that, I'd rather cut them off. So pull that up, then we come along with our cutters again, get in here. These are the Tamiya fine point cutters, they're perfect for stuff like this. So that's that off, that can go in the bin. Now we've got our tracks here, we can lay them down flat. Should be able to work along with a stick. And yes, it does work. Yep, yeah, takes them off beautifully. Fills the tracks up with dust, but you can just blow them out with the airbrush. Just grab the airbrush. Just like so, blow all the dust out. There we go. So that's that done. So that works. Um, we've still got a bit of witness there, I can see. But, um, a little bit of witness won't really matter, I don't think. But uh, as I say, the trouble is they're right where they've been better off been on that side. But they're right where you want to put the the, the polished metal. So um, there we go. They really are nice tracks. To the person I can't remember your name, oh sorry. Somebody commented that when you build them up, they just they form an arc. Well, I know I've only done a few links, but they look pretty straight to me. They look to be very, very nice indeed. Um, I would imagine the issue you had, issue you had there, was you maybe didn't remove the sprue nib. So as they've gone together, you've got like in, in in between the links, you've got a nubbin which is actually pushing them apart, and it just gets worse and worse as you go along. I mean, I might eat my words. We'll see, but um. They look pretty straight to me. I'm putting that rule there against the horns and they look, it looks fine. So, I don't know, maybe you had a dodgy batch. Maybe it, maybe they changed the tooling or something. Maybe from the first tooling they, uh, they realised they had a problem they've made new tooling. But they certainly seem very nice to me. They're, the, they're probably the nicest workable tracks I've ever used. They really are lovely because they're strong. They're straight, they're flexible, you know, the, some of the um, border model ones, the ones I did on that Crusader, they're lovely, but they're very, very weak. Um, yeah, really, really like those. The only thing, as I say, the downside is one side's going to have this open hole. So I'm not sure if that's accurate or not. Maybe it is, I don't know, we'll have to check some references, but uh, yeah, don't really like that very much. Anyway. I'm going to carry on and um, put a film on or something and just drive myself crazy. But, uh, I'm not sure if this glass fire would actually do that job pretty well as well. It would, it would show you if there's any raised bits because they'll come, they'll go shiny. But, um, they are lovely. They're really, really nice. I'm going to have to make up a mask as well to paint those black bits, those black rubbers. I have to look at doing that. Lay it flat like that, turn it over, put a mask on, just hold something in place, spray it black. We shall see. Right, I'm going to get on with these tracks. Right, so we've got one track made up, 94 links. The instructions say 95, but the lad I saw that did the the online build said 94 worked better, so I've done 94, it's easier to add one than to take one away. So there we are, that's uh, that's one lot of tracks. So, we've got this suspension now all nice and dry, so we can add some road wheels and stuff, and we'll see how it all goes together. Um, I don't know if the return rollers will press into place. Will they or not? Am I going to... They're going to want to fall out, but uh, we'll see. So we can put the road wheels on, like so. 
and I just this is just basically just to track just to check if it's 94 or 95 we need and the beauty of this kit having poly caps means we can take all the wheels on and off as we please and there's an idler to go on the front just gonna press on there and another road wheel to go in here and then we got some return rollers one in there and come here one in there so now I'm not sure which way the track goes it doesn't really matter does it we can lay the track in there get it through this is not so easy to do in the camera there is the return rollers are just going to keep falling off aren't they because they can we get this round the sprocket like so and there we go and then we can bring What's still going on there? The track's actually stuck on the edge of the hull. Oh, bring the track round like so, and then get it together just like that. So there's our 94 links, and yeah, I think that guy was perhaps correct. Although I think 95 will probably give it a little bit of a sag on the bottom. We need a little bit of a sag here. Let me um Yeah, if I fit the track like that, it's it's very tight and it's actually pulling up that road wheel there. So I think 94 is a tad too tight. Yeah, when I put it down, it's 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 pulling up these these road wheels here. You can see they're they're up on an angle. So if we go one extra link, like so, we can see that it allows it all to sit, and we get a little bit of a sag down there. So ninety five is correct. Ninety four is a bit too tight, I think. So there we are. Right. So now we know that nine, that's that's that test done. Ninety five links it is, and um. We'll have a little bit of a droop here and we'll have a little bit of sag in the top and all our road wheels sit so that when the tank goes down on the ground if I just have a straight edge like so you can see when it goes down on the ground all the wheels will sit flat with the track rather than being pulled up here so there we are right so we can take this all apart now as you can see these tracks are lovely they're a little bit on the stiff side on the joints but I'd rather that than them all be loose and falling apart but you can see they're quite strong um, they are really really nice be very very careful when you do the the sanding here when you sand the um, the ejector pins away hold the hold the other side down like that or perhaps even with a rule would be a good idea actually hold the other side down nice and firm so that it can't gather because while I was doing it at one point it, it picked up and it caught hold of one link and broke the pin off so if you hold it down like that that makes it a lot easier to sand and then they can't lift up and cause a problem there's a bit of an ejector pin mark I can see there so um there we go but uh, yeah on the whole really really happy with those so we'll call that a day for part three so that's been our um, fixing the suspension and tracks so I'll get all that taken apart now I'll get another track made up and then we can probably get on with the build uh, I'm not sure what's coming next what was it 28 wasn't it so once we've done all that then we can go back to step 11 and start to do this work we won't bother fitting lights and greeblies and bits and pieces We'll go 11 and then we'll jump straight to 18, I think. 11 straight to 18, we can deal with any seams or anything. And we can go on and then fit the, 
the rear bulkhead and everything and all good like that. We also need to look if the top has grills. Open grills. No, it doesn't. I was going to say, if the top has open grills, we need to paint the inside here black, otherwise you'll see the light grey plastic inside. And we'll also paint these black before we put the photo etch on, because I've seen many people don't bother, and then from certain angles you'll see the grey plastic showing through. So I'll see you back for part four, and um, we'll move forward from there. Thank you for watching. See you all soon, and bye for now.